Hello and welcome to Aqua Lifestyles. I'm Glenn and today we are going to discuss the Simrad radar and extra features available on the Simrad Go series of chart plotter fish finders. We're also going to be discussing some of the extra features that have not been brought up in the previous series on this unit. We have videos on the fish finding features, the chart plotting features of the Simrad Go. So check the links below for those videos, but we will cover the remaining features on the Simrad Go at the tail end of this video. So stay tuned and let's see what it can do. worth paying a visit to the Simrad website to see the different radar antenna options that are available for these units, both domes and open arrays. So definitely check out the website for the different options available there and you'll be able to pick out the radar that's going to suit your requirements the best. Okay, let's get started. If I click on the radar icon, our radar screen will pop up and you see there's quite a bit of information in here. You've got your main radar screen, and you have your data boxes over here telling you what's going on in each of different modes that you've got. You've got mode and customization on the screen here. You can click on that and you can have custom, you can have harbor mode, offshore mode, weather mode, or bird mode. And each of these is optimized for those particular types of systems. It's already got uh, presets in there. Uh, for the modes to optimize them for each. So you can do a custom if you want. You can do your harbor, offshore weather, or birds if you're looking for birds in your fishing. So those are your custom modes and you can access those just by clicking. Up here, these little guys here, that's your gain. And you can adjust with a slider. The gain will increase or decrease the gain or sensitivity of the screen. You may want to keep it in auto gain most of the time. That's going to be adequate for you unless you're in foggy conditions or heavy rain. Uh, you might want to change the gain. If we click on S, C clutter, if you're getting a lot of C clutter from rough seas, again you can adjust it. Uh, you can change your C state from calm, moderate, or rough. Sea clutter, you can have it manual, harbor, or offshore. Again, preset modes. So, or you can manually adjust it with your slider. If I crank it up on the sea state or crank it down, that changes the amount of clutter on there, but it also changes the sensitivity. Keep that in mind. Down at the bottom here, of the three, you've got rain clutter. Again, you can adjust it depending if you're in heavy rain, you need to make adjustments, you can do so with your slider. If I tap on the radar, that'll go away. Of course, you got your data bar over here and you have all your radar information in this data screen here. You can adjust, you can change your mode, gain, see clutter, rain clutter from this menu. You can click advanced you can have noise rejections if you're getting interference from other electronics or lights on board. You might want to turn that on or off depending on whether you need it. Your threshold, you can adjust with your slider. You've got target expansion capabilities by checking the button on and off. Uh, same with your rejection, interference rejection, off, low, medium, and high. Fast scan, you can turn it to medium or high speed to do faster sweeps. We're going to leave it on medium. So you see it's sweeping a little bit faster there, updating itself. Target boost, you can turn off, low, or high. If we go back here, those are the advanced settings, your view. So you have velocity track symbology, target trails, palette orientation, position. 
Again, these are all, you can enter them and change them to whatever you like. Like on the palettes here, you can change our colors. Depending on the screen that you like. That's the traditional radar. Go back to that. Orientation again, you can change your orientation just like you can on the chart, heading up, north up, or course up. Your position, you can have it look ahead like you can on the chart. You can offset it if you want to, or true motion. Um, in a heads up mode, true motion, as it just said, is not allowed. So we would have to go back, orientation. Do course up or north up, heads up. On radar, you're generally going to run it in heads up mode. You can run it in north up or course up. Heads up usually makes the most sense and it's easiest to interpret, generally speaking. Those are our options in view. Electronic bearing line, variable range markers, you can turn those on or off, one or two. You can set up guard zones if you want, very easily, two different guard zones, one and two. If we want to do guard zone one, there it is. If we want to change our shape to a circle, we can. If we want to adjust it, we can adjust our range and make it bigger. So if we want to set our guard zone, let's say to this area here, anything entering that zone will trigger the alarm. Anything inside those rings there. Okay, if we go back, depth, we can increase and decrease the depth of that guard zone using our slider. Very nice feature. If we go back here, that's our guard zones. So we've been through advanced view, electronic bearing lines, guard zones. And of course we have standby where you can turn the radar off in standby mode. You'll see your guard zones and your information displayed minus the radar. If I want to transmit, just hit the button and it transmits again. So radar on this is very simple, very basic. There are some more advanced features on here which you may want to look at the owner's manual or refer to the owner's manual on. Um, electronic bearing line, variable range marker. If we want to adjust it, I can, with my cross here, you can see I can set it anywhere I want on any particular target I want and it'll give me my range marker and my electronic bearing line. Easy to adjust just by moving my finger and dragging the cursor to where I want them to be. If I want to save it, I just hit the button and it will save that. I do not want to save it, so we're going to go back. I can turn that off. So those are my electronic bearing line and variable range markers and I can turn them on and off just by checking each one and I can adjust and set the offset so that's our electronic range markers so that's the radar basic um, we're going to have a video specifically on radar how to read them how to use electronic bearing lines variable range markers how to set up uh, and watch targets how to set up your guard zones uh, those kind of things. So stay tuned for a video showing all of those features. Okay, so we've talked about radar. We've talked about the nav screen. A couple of other interesting features on the Simrad Go is you've got time plot. This will display graphs of your depth, water temperature, miles per hour, velocity made good. You can customize any of these windows that you want to show a bar graph, a time plot over time off the data. So you can see, for example, depth if you're getting deeper, shallower water temperature. You can see spikes or dips in temperature and fine thermals, that kind of thing. So this gives you that possibility. If we hit our menu there, we've got a couple of different ways of laying out the data in the graph form. Do layout one, 
play out too. You can edit them easily. You can select info, time range. You can set up your time range and save that. Um, data sources. These are the different sources that you can select to get information. If you hit advanced, it takes you into each of the different options for data. You can really get fancy with it if you want to. Kind of a nice feature if you're interested in plotting things over time and seeing changes. The last one is instruments. Instruments, you can tie in all kinds of instrumentation and have them display on this machine. Now, it's popping up first time configuration. This will happen for you um, when you first set it up. But uh, you're going to have gauge setups like this, and you can customize them to show different kinds of information. If we hit our menu here, that's our basic dashboard. You can do digits if you want to do digits. You can have a navigation dashboard. Again, you got your roadway if you're steering to a particular waypoint. This is another nice screen to have. And you have engines. Now this one with through NEMA 2000, you can actually tie in engine data information and you can customize it. Um, so if we set it to that, we can actually edit this now and we can go in We'll let it load here. We can go in and we can name it engines. You can name it whatever you want and you can actually customize the data. If we had information feeding into this, you could customize it and set up your gauges. You've got your voltage there. You got if you have the fuel information feeding in, you can have that information. Time of day, of course, um, speed over ground, or, uh, your war and your RPMs and engine information that way. So you can set up your trim tabs, um, all kinds. You can customize it any way you want. You just hit that. Um, you can change your caption if you want to create a caption for it. You can put in your different engine information. You can put in your, if you've got more than one engine, left and right you can put that data in and customize it just by touching the screen so you tap it to customize it and you have the different information that you can put in minimum maximum information that kind of thing so very nice feature to have we cancel out of that okay so that is the simrad go fantastic machine very capable a lot of features and functions now, if you have questions on anything that we've covered in this series, you can put the questions in the comments down below. We'll do the best we can to answer them for you. Also, the owner's manual for this unit is available online from Simrad's website. Easy to download. It's a good manual. It's well written. There is also a quick user or a quick reference guide. I recommend going through the quick reference guide. Go through each of the features on that while you have the machine in front of you. It'll help you fam get familiar with the operating system and the machine itself. And it's just very good for familiarization of the uh, product itself. Definitely worth doing. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit the notification bell. And that way you'll know when future videos are posted. Remember to check out the rest in the series for this Go unit. There are quite a few. It is an extensive machine, so to keep the videos relatively short, uh, we had to split it into multiple videos. So check back for each of those. And thank you so much for watching.